2016 um, meeting of the planning board of the town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, the agenda has on it three items. There will be an approval of minutes of the previous meeting. We will be hearing from the <coughs> town of Cape Elizabeth, which is requesting site plan review of the recycling center located at Denison Road. And third will be uh, the 12 Hillway subdivision reapproval and side plan amendments. Uh, Dr. Zev and Amber Myrowitz are requesting a reapproval of a three lot subdivision located in Hillway. <coughs> the prior approval having lapsed on August 17th. And minor amendments uh, to the site plan approval um, of the Cape Chiropractic Acupuncture Center. And lastly, there will be an opportunity for public comment on any matter which is not on the agenda. The first uh, item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of the previous meeting, which have been circulated. Are there any comments or corrections to be made by any board members? Being none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Henry? Second. Second. Uh, Joe, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously, thank you. <clears throat> the next uh, item, uh, the Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review of an upgrade to the recycling center located in Denison Drive. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. The procedure will be as follows. Uh, the board will begin by having the applicant uh, introduce a project. There will then be an opportunity for public comment on the completeness of the application. And then the board will consider the issue of completeness. If it's considered incomplete, uh, the board will identify the information needed to make it complete, and there will be no substantive discussion. If the application is deemed complete, the review may commence. We will decide if a site walk or public hearing will be scheduled. And at the end of this discussion, we, uh, assuming completeness has been determined, we will table the application to the next meeting uh, for consideration on the merits. Uh, that said, uh, perhaps we could hear from the town. And sir, if you could identify yourself and uh, describe your project. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Malley. I'm the director of public works for the town, um, managing the project. And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome Megan McDevitt from the firm of Woodard and Curran. Uh, the town has contracted with them to facilitate the project, which includes uh, preliminary engineering, design, and the uh, approval protocol process. So uh, I'd like to introduce Megan, and she will introduce the project to you, and feel free to ask any questions along the way from either of us. Thank you, Bob. Um, as Bob mentioned, my name is Megan McDevitt. I'm a project manager with Water and & Curran, and we have been working with the town for about a year and a half on looking at the recycling center and what kind of upgrades we can do to make sure that Cape Elizabeth is well positioned to manage their solid waste and recycling for the next 20 years. Um, as part of the solid waste and recycling long range planning committee that was established last year and evaluated, um, the committee came up with some recommendations and this project is our attempt to put those uh, recommendations into real life thought and to move it forward towards construction that will improve the level of service of the facility, improve the efficiency of the facility, and most importantly, improve the safety of this uh, facility. So if it's okay with everyone, I'd like to just go over what the proposed upgrades are now. And if there are any questions, just let me know during the way. So this plan right here, um, it's our demolition plan and what it is is a plan of the existing conditions of the site and just to quickly recap, I'm sure many of you have used the transfer station and are fairly familiar with it, but I just want to go over how it operates right now. Um, entrance to the site comes through Denison Drive and when you come in, there are these three single sort recycling containers. They do not compact. They have high skinny holes where individuals and residents can put their recycling. Um, this is your first option. You can stop here. If you keep moving forward, then you would go forward here, and there are four parking spots right along this area right here that you could park, get out, and then walk your 
what I call MSW, which stands for municipal solid waste, also known as your daily household trash. Um, but you could walk that into the building and drop that into the compactor, the hopper in the compactor. You then could pull forward and go to these containers right here, which is for your corrugated cardboard. You would then continue clock, counterclockwise around the facility. And back here we have the, what we call bulky waste retaining wall. This is where you could get rid of shingles, metal, furniture, refrigerators, all sorts of things like that. And finally, you can pull forward, and this is where all your additional amenities are. Um, you have your vacuums, your donation box, the bottle shed, and the swap shop. And there's currently nine parking spots in this area um, that you can park in, go out, and use any of these amenities for a, a brief period of time. And then the plan is to exit the site. Um, so that is how the operation currently works. Um, there are concerns about the congestion, the speed at which residents use the site, the way that uh, travel, it's not ideal right now for individuals to have to park here and walk their solid waste all the way into the building. But the whole point of this was to try to eliminate backing so to make sure that all the residents were moving in the same direction. So that's how it operates now. And what I'm going to show you is our proposal is to even further this approach of all forward movement, getting everyone to move in one nice motion around the facility. If I go to the next page, this is the new proposed layout for the site. As you can see, you'll still enter the site from Denison Drive. What we've added right here, this kind of oblong shaped dotted thing is a it's a concrete island. Um, it doesn't stick up very far, only about a three quarters to an inch. Very similar to the islands that you see a lot of times in roadways that help separate like left turning lanes from right turning lanes and things like that. It'll just be a low profile, but it will be an island to help let you know you can't take a left. We want you to go right. Um, once you take a right, there'll be five individual lanes. These lanes, the first four up at the top are for both recycling and MSW or trash disposal. You will pull forward and here what you'll see first will be two compactors. These are for recycling. Right now the single sort recycling containers that are on the site carry about a total of six tons of recycling, uncompacted recycling a week. Each one of these compactors can transport alone seven to eight tons of compacted material. So we're greatly reduce, or increasing your capacity for recycling, which is good because we want to encourage more of that and get rid of the trash in the facility. Um, and also reducing the hauling. You won't need to haul uh, the recycling containers nearly as often. So residents will be able to pull up right next to these containers. And then there'll be a door that'll be fairly large, probably three feet by four feet that will be open 95% of the time. It will be a big opening. You can just go in and throw your recycling right in there. Um, it can be accessed from both sides. So this top lane and the second lane will both dispose of their recycling this compactor. Lane three and lane four will both dispose of their recycling this compactor. Once you've uh, completed that, you can pull forward and then there'll be three compactors over here for MSW. This compactor right here is more of a um, high demand, special services. It's kind of an emergency compactor. We don't intend it to be used all the time, but that weekend after Christmas when everybody comes at once and they have a lot of trash, it's there so that we don't have to haul these while the facility is open. Mostly it will be these two compactors right here that will be used. They will be exactly like the recycling compactor. You'll be able to access them for both sides. They'll have a big opening that you can throw your trash right into. And the MSW compactors can hold about 10 to 12 tons. Um, this compactor right here is doing about 10 to 12 tons a week right now. Part, it can do more typically, but the equipment is getting old, so it's not as efficient. And also because they only have one compactor, they do have to be strategic in when they unload the hopper and when they transport the trailer to uh, make sure they're ready for the next day. So very similar capacity. We've made sure that these two compactors will have similar capacity and similar hauling as to what happens currently. One good thing I will mention is that you'll notice the cardboard containers are gone. That is because cardboard can be put in the same compactors as all of your other recycling. So no more having to stop twice for recycling. 
um, to get rid of your single sort and then your cardboard, it can all be put in these containers or these compactors right at the beginning of the facility. Once you're done that, you would just continue around the facility as you normally do. The retaining wall for bulky waste would stay up here. Um, for those who have been to the site, they'll notice we had put jersey barriers about three feet away from the edge to help prevent any falling. That's not ideal and it's not providing the best level of service. It's making it difficult for individuals to reach the containers. Things aren't quite getting there and they're just falling behind the jersey barriers and um, the attendants are then stuck having to clean that up on a regular basis. What we're proposing to do is just install a nice handrail right along the top of the um, retaining wall so that you can get right up to the edge of the retaining wall, but then there will be that physical and visual barrier to make sure nobody accidentally falls off the edge of the retaining wall. So a galvanized steel retain uh, handrail will be installed all along the top of this. That retaining wall will be about three foot six inches high, that's code, and it's very similar to the height of the fence at which you're currently throwing your trash over in the compactor building. So similar height to what you're used to uh, disposing of materials on site. Then pulling forward, we'll go over to what we'd like to call the new and improved kind of amenities part of the site. Again, you'll see we're putting in another uh, concrete island. What we have done is we've come up with two lanes. For anyone who doesn't want to visit the swap shop or the donation boxes, or um, the bottle shed, they would be able to just pull forward right here and right exit the site. No need to stop, it'll just be a nice smooth exit. If you want to go to any of these amenities, you can come over here and what we have done is design this parking lot off to the side, as well as put a few spots in here and some parallel parking along here. This is a one-way road. This road will have to stop to this traffic. Um, we have now put in 14 spots, which is an improvement five spots over what's currently there. We also were able to make an ADA compliant spot. Uh, another advantage of this is we have pushed all, most of the uh, parking away from the travel lanes so that individuals will get out and you're now in more of a parking lot type of um, activity. We've got a sidewalk that will be put along the building so that individuals here who park in this can go to the sidewalk and then walk in front of the bottle shop and the swap shop to go use those facilities versus having to walk out, back out into moving traffic. Now, I'll go back to the beginning. If you get to the site and you, for some reason, don't want to go, you don't have recycling or you don't have trash you want to go to, you just want to go to the swap shop, you just need to go to bulky waste, or maybe you need to go over here to the construction debris, there is this fifth lane at the bottom and it's the bypass lane. And that lane is not attached to any of the compactors. So you do have this option to come down to the bottom and go right through. And that's your way, you could go right through to go to the swap shop if necessary, or any of these amenities over here. It will also allow you to come down here, which we are going to turn the current compactor building into a storage building, and it will remain the office for any of those items that you need to pay for. So you'll have a way to come here, there'll be five or six parking spots down here that you can park at. You're away from all the traffic of where everybody is getting rid of their trash and recycling. You can go in, handle any business you need to, to pay for anything that needs to be disposed of, and then you can back up and then pull back out into the bypass lane and make your way around the site. Um, this compactor building, one thing what we'll do in there to upgrade it is we'll get rid of the compactor and we'll close off that big hole in the floor to make it more of a functional space for the town. Um, the town does have their radio antenna off it, so it's an important building. So we do want to preserve it and plan to keep using it for that. It will also be a place where all the e-waste or universal waste, the TVs, the computers, batteries, all those things that they have to package, the town will now be able to store in here and have those come and picked up. Um, right now they're outside and the poor tenants have to work on a piece of plywood to manage them. Now they'll have a space. So it's going to be a functional building that will use for both office and storage of the universal waste moving forward. And that is the basic outline of the project. One thing I will add on the next sheet, that putting in, doing this little bit of realignment as well as adding this additional parking to support these side amenities over here does increase our uh, impervious pavement by about 9,100 square feet. So we wanted to provide some stormwater treatment to account for that and to um, help provide treatment to what is an industrial facility. So down here, which this is the base of the slope 
Um, some of you may know this is the uh, salt pile. Some people may have gone as residents to use salt for their own needs, but right adjacent to it is a big grass area. There's an existing culvert right here, and what the site currently does is all the drainage runs down here, goes to this culvert, crosses the street, and goes into um, these existing wetlands that are located between the transfer station, or sorry, the recycling center and the public works garage. What we're proposing, this is a great spot for us to build um, an under-drain soil filter, which is a DEP-approved um, BMP. And what will be is a small detention pond that allows the water drain here. It will filtrate through a soil media that will help provide treatment. It will then go into under-drains that will go to a structure and connect to this existing culvert and eventually continue to drain the water to these wetlands but it will provide treatment and detention for that additional runoff before it gets to those wetlands. So that's one um, improvement we're looking to make on the site to account for the, the 9,100 square feet of impervious improvements. Um, in addition to those improvements, the one other thing we will be doing is at each of these slabs, um, when these compactors compact, Sometimes the juices from your trash or MS Devil will leak out the bottom, much more in your trash than in your recycling. So what we have designed is these uh, slabs will be sloped with a drain in the middle. And so when they compact and those juices, which we call leachate, leach out, they'll go down to that drain and they'll collect in these subsurface uh, sewer pipes and make their way to an existing sewer manhole and go into the existing sewer system. This is not anticipated to be a very large amount of water or uh, wastewater at all. And Bob has confirmed as the um, superintendent of the wastewater department that there is sufficient capacity in the system to handle these additional things. But it's something we wanted to make sure we accounted for. So that would be one additional improvement we're making to the site. The existing compactor building does have a similar drain at the bottom of it, so that drain will no longer be used because there'll be no more compactor in there. So we're just kind of relocating the system up into the site where the new compactors will be. And that is pretty much the summary of everything we're planning on doing. Is there any questions at this point? Any, anything I can answer? Um, before we open for public comment, do board members have any questions uh, and before we go into a discussion? Jonathan. I just have a quick question. Why is there a second stop sign uh, by the new non that right there? Right here. Yeah. This stop sign is we wanted to make a way for if somebody found an extra bag, let's say, they forgot they wanted to throw something, it gives them a way to come back and re-go through one of these lanes without having to leave the site, turn around, and come back in. It's also a lot of this is meant for the uh, trucks that will be hauling these containers after hour. Because okay. when they come in, they will, what they will have to do is drop off an empty container, go around, pick up the new container, go around again to leave. So we want to give them a way of getting in and out of that without having to leave the site every time. But, but do you have do not enter signs there? Yes, we do have do not enter signs. So no one can come up here and take a left. This is only for individuals coming out that would then continue to take a right into this facility. OK, my, but, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but the question is, is it, I understand that it's more for people or for trucks that you want them to stop right there, but for regular folk who are coming to the dump, you're going to have a do not stop, do not enter sign, so it just might be confusing to people if it says do not enter, but then there's also kind of an option, that, but if you need to, you can. So just yeah, so the, go the, one way or the other on them. The do not enter sign will be, for, will be seen from this side of the line. And the stop will be on this side. Oh, okay. All right. So I, was I apologize if my note okay, is no, so clear. So do not enter is coming or going. Right. Through. So it's for if you All pull right. up here and you're getting to this top lane, it's knowing you can't go left. Right. It'll be that facing is. them. You will not be able to read it from the other direction. That answers my question. Thanks. Okay. Wonderful. Hi there. Yeah. So you've set it up so that once you're at the swap shop in that area, you have to leave the facility in order to get back in. Was that intent? or is that just there's really no other good way to do that it's it's intentional in that we don't want to encourage too much crossing traffic so it's taking advantage of where things currently lay out without moving buildings um, 
based on the observations, I've been at the site quite a few times looking at things, you know, over the last 18 months. And that seems to be the pattern that most residents who use the site, once they go to the swap shop, they leave. Um, and we do want to encourage, you know, there is a strategy behind putting recycling first and then MSW. It's so you encourage individuals to recycle and then get rid of their trash second. So we were just thinking that this kind of was the flow that most individuals used. Um, and again, we've had the problems of what we've seen in the current uh, situation where individuals come in and they take a sharp left in front of exiting traffic to get to the swap shop. So these islands are really trying to also prevent that. So that's why we kind of have this one way, one loop around the facility. But those islands, you can drive on them, right? They're not the tire wreckers. <laughs> not they're, they're meant for the attendants of the facility to be able to plow it so they can plow the facility and not have to go around a grass island that they could disturb. But they are meant for residents not to drive over. Um, if you go to swap shop and then you decide you need to go back to another part of the facility, most likely what's going to have to happen is you'll have to leave and turn around and come back in. That's, that's the best way right now we have without having another crossing lane. Because this, this lane right here is the main out and is going to be steady flow traffic. So that would be yeah. kind of crossing of two lanes to allow residents to loop back around without leaving the site. We're just trying to keep everyone moving one direction and keep it separate as much as possible. Uh, Henry. Um, first of all, I, I noticed it's to do with the swap shop and the parking facility that you have there. Okay. I noticed that you put that parking facility because you didn't want people to get out of the car and walk in front of other cars going through. But you actually sort of encourage that by having a front entrance of those stores you have to come out the car, walk back into the line, into the line of traffic coming through. Why not have a back entrance to those stores that then you don't have that problem? That is actually something the town and we have discussed about is it possible to add doors to the side of the bottle shed closer to the parking lot or on the back side of the facility. Um, some of the concerns is just the space in the building, but it is something we can continue to evaluate farther. So not, I mean, you're not trying to protect it. It's not like somebody's going to steal it. No, <laughs> no. No, I mean, that was meant to be a joke, <laughs> possibly a poor one. But, um, yeah, it would seem that, you know, if you could separate the moving, moving line. Other than that, I think it's a, a nice design, by the way. Yeah, it's definitely something we can continue to look at, and it's something um, Bob has definitely brought to my attention. Um, we just have to evaluate where we can fit the door on the inside, and I know those buildings are very tight. Just one other question while I'm about it, yep. the safety issue. Um, only three feet up the door, so you have to lift the bag up three feet to drop it in. Uh, is there any chance <laughs> that children or people could get somehow or other hurt in that, that, that situation? I mean, or, or even animals climbing into the compactors. The other ones, I noticed the big compactor at the current moment has a roof over it. Mm -hmm. So, but these are going to be open air, and I assume that somehow or other animals, tend and birds and stuff, are stuff to go after because it's garbage, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wonder about that. Yeah. So you'll have to lift any recycling or trash up three foot six inches. That is, by code, the fall protection height. So any handrails, any wall, I, I can tell you those handrails right now are three foot six inches high. That's per code. So the start of the openings on these compactors will be that high off the ground. They will have what I call a doghouse. They will have a cover over them and then the doors will be on the side. So that's only to the, to the driver. The compactor itself is enclosed? Or does yes, roof open? everything's oh, enclosed. And okay, then. Everything is enclosed. There will just be a door that's open during times and then the, when they actually compact it, that door will shut so that for safety reasons, no one can put their hands in or, or throw trash during compactor. No, so. no, thank you. No, yeah. uh -huh. Any questions over here first? I do, but it's not related to completeness, which is, oh. I believe, the topic. That the topic is completeness. Under, under uh, we're working on is completeness. Okay. Jonathan. One, I think you addressed this at the workshop, for, but just for members of the public, any changes with the, um, the leaves or branches uh, that where you get rid of those on this plan? So we are showing a little bit. It's called clearing on the plan, but I went out there. No, and, I, I'm talking about, like, debris. Oh, no, no. 
composting, branches, and construction debris, nothing will change for that. No, no proposed changes. Okay, thanks. Uh, two small questions. Uh, one, the, the, the parking scheme up by the swap shop <clears throat> has two parallel spaces across the, the road from there as, as well as the new parking area. So presumably some people will be passing over that roadway and I would imagine in busy times they may be parked elsewhere. Is thought been given to putting in a crosswalk uh, type of uh, demarcation between those parallel spaces and the um, swap shop parking itself? Yeah, I think we could definitely do that, especially we can tie the crosswalk for these parallel spots um, to the accessible loading zone for the uh, accessible parking spot. So we could definitely tie a crosswalk there. Um, I also know attendants tend to park their cars a lot over here. So we could also designate to try to prevent a lot of that crossing. We could designate these two parallel spots for the attendants who are running the swap shop, which would reduce the number of times individuals are walking across that lane. Just because they're maybe wandering out in that passageway, it seems to me that calming the traffic down to the extent possible would be useful. Yep. The other question I had was in the, um, the lighting plan. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't aware that this area was lighted. Under what circumstances would, would exterior lighting come on other than just around the buildings for security? Well, I mean, the facility is closed at, before dark, I believe, isn't it? Not during the winter. Oh, during the winter. So you're dark at uh, five o'clock uh, during okay. those months. So the the lighting is there, and we have proposed. I will just go to the lighting plan real quick. You, you don't go to the transfer station much, huh? <laughs> <laughs> during daytime, daylight hours. Less retired guys have it easy. Um. But yes, it's, it's for the winter times more and okay. at the last couple hours that they're open. Um, and then this is that lighting photometric plan. Right. Because we've moved the compactors away from the building, we've added some additional lights to just make sure that there's sufficient lighting at each of those compactors and all the areas of public use. Uh, I apologize for my insensitivity to working stiff. <laughs> uh, any other questions from board members? Um, at this point, we'll open the meeting for uh, public comments, if any. Any members of the public wish to be heard? Regarding Re completeness. Pardon me? Right, I'm sorry, regarding completeness, yes. Uh, there being none, we'll close the public comment period and proceed to discussion on the issue of completeness. Board members have comments, questions, discussion items? Not on completeness. On completeness? Other side? No, I, I don't have any comments. I, I believe this is complete, and I have no issue with any of the waivers they're asking for. But I do, once we get through this part, I do have substantive questions, or at least one. So. Right, well, that will, that will come in the next phase. I share Caroline's view. I think it's a very complete, well thought out presentation. Um, so that being the case, <coughs> excuse me, would the board uh, care to have a site walk? Any members of the board feel strongly pro or con the idea of a site walk? <coughs> I always like to go there. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I go there. I go there a lot. I, I'm sort of interested in seeing it all. This has been a fairly hot item in town. Um, and I, I think it would be a good idea simply just to get a visual view of what the new proposed thing will look at, look like. Um, the, um, we can go at night. Well, <laughs> well, Maureen actually has a couple of dates which work for uh, Bob Malley's group, I think, when it's the, 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 the site is not in operation. Is it general consensus you're going to do the site walk? Well, how many would like to do a site walk? It doesn't matter. I'm kind of like. I'm fine. I'll do one, yeah. Uh, we got three, we'll there, three right? in favor and four indifferent. Indifferent. I'm indifferent. It doesn't matter. I'm indifferent. I've got to go card a lot. Well, that, that being the case, I'm not going to uh, pound the table on this. Um, I guess we can forego a site walk in, unless. As a matter of town policy, the planner thinks that the town would benefit well, by our on-site view. I, I want to be fair to the applicant, and 
in my memo, uh, page two, yeah. second paragraph, I've noted that um, we have kind of a parting of the ways on what should happen on the major island. I'm suggesting that a few well-placed, salt-tolerant, deciduous trees would be a good idea. The applicant is very, very resistant to that. And so it seemed like going on a site walk and seeing it might help the board make a determination about whether that's appropriate or whether another treatment might, might be appropriate or whether what the applicant has proposed is completely acceptable. So that's kind of the main reason why you may want to be out there. But you may be you may be sufficiently familiar with the site that you feel that you can have that conversation without a site walk. So I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, I, I think we can combine a site walk with a little bit of discussion as to whether beautification of the um, recycling center is doable, desirable. Um, whether it should be trees, it should be shrubs, whether it should be nothing at all. Um, I, I'm not sure how far our mandate ex extends on this um, beyond the concept of what is pretty and what isn't, and is it necessary. Any thoughts? I mean, I, th I think I can consider the, the planting issue without being there on site for that purpose. Victoria. Should we just take the site walk? I mean, there's a lot of indifference here, but if there are people that want to, should we just do that and, and then? Why not? Let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come in on site and say, yeah, we should go and see it. Yeah, when, I mean, I would rather err on the side because I am indifferent, but I'd rather err on the side of the people who do want to put some boots on the ground and then. And we okay, we, we, we have four point. people who are mildly in, mildly in favor. And Jonathan, I can see leaning. <laughs> I have to go to the dump every week, so. <laughs> yeah, we're going to kill two there. birds with one stone. Okay, uh, <laughs> let us schedule a site walk. Um, so. I, I, think, I, I think it would be a good idea. Uh, uh, the, I've spoken to the public works director. He's recommending uh, two dates to consider because the, tr the recycling center will be closed and he will not be out of town. So that would be this Thursday, the 22nd or next Tuesday, the 27th. Um, you know, you could do it first thing in the morning, you could do it near the end of the day, which means you don't have to do it on a Saturday, which by the way, he's recommending you not do it on a Saturday because it's a busy place. I don't even take my personal trash there on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about uh, Tuesday the 27th, early, early? Is that how early? I got some place I have to be at eight. Oh. I'd rather do later in the afternoon. Yeah, I'd rather do late. Not late, late, but I What's think I could do five. Four thirty-five. Good. Yeah, I've got, I got a plan in the evening, which maybe I can change. What was the second date? Thursday, the twenty-second. Is that right? Twenty-second. Yes. How do people feel about Thursday, the twenty-second? I could do that in the afternoon. Yeah, I can do the afternoon. Depends on the timing. Yeah. What about um, Bob? Thursday, the twenty-second at uh, four thirty. Is, can you guys handle 4.30? Yes. In the morning? Yeah. You're going to check the lighting. I can do 4.30. Okay, so thir uh, Thursday, September 22nd at 4.30 uh, at the site. Excuse me. Is there one place in particular on the site you'd like us all to meet? Okay. Sounds good. Um, is there any other discussion that the board would like to engage in? Um, on I completeness? Would, I would like to make the motion for completeness. If Absolutely. Unless anyone else has any other completeness. Is there any other discussion on completeness? No. So then okay, we can would move you on because I do have questions like Carol Lance. I'll just, just complete this. Motion for completeness. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of upgrades to the recycling center located at Denison Drive be deemed complete. A finding of completeness includes granting waivers for the submission of the following items in accordance with section 19-9-4C17. Number one. Submission of the names of owners of all continuous land and within 200 feet of the property. 
Waiver number two, lot line dimensions. Number three, the location of buildings, structures, streets, easements, driveways, entrances, or exits located on the property, but not within the area of construction. Waiver number four, building setback, sideline, and rear yard distance. And waiver number five would be existing physical features beyond the area of construction. Second. Discussion on the motion? I just I'd like to add for the sake of the viewing public that the, um, the um, waivers have been considered, particularly in light of the fact that we're, we have an existing site which is fully developed and operational, and what we're basically doing is doing some internal restructuring. A lot of these waivers seem appropriate because they're not affected by the scope of the project. Any other discussion on this? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? carries unanimously. And then we will then uh, uh, like to ask for a motion to table this to the public hearing at the October meeting of the planning board. We actually have some questions and I believe Carol Ann beat me to that. So I will oh, throw I it over to you just, and maybe then. I have just one question about the, yeah. Anyway, um, the lanes, the, re, the recycling and the compactor lanes as you exit them, is there, is there something planned to make people slow down and look before they uh, pull out into the flow of traffic? Is there some sort of signage or, or I'm not, I, I hate to see five stop signs, so that seems stupid, but something. Completely understand. Um, we can definitely evaluate and see if some sort of signage or merge lines to show that lanes will be merging together um, to encourage <coughs> that residents slow down. Um, hopefully most of the residents will have been stopped at the compactor so they're not coming from a moving speed, they're coming from a slow um, position to begin with. But we can definitely evaluate that and, and propose some, some options to just make sure that individuals are aware that five lanes are merging down. Um, so. yeah, uh, Carolyn, if your question is to the merits of the application, we can perhaps consider that at the, at the public hearing, the, the, at the next meeting, or did you need something? No, I just wanted to Close. bring it up for that. Oh, no, no, absolutely. So that, that they could address that at, at the next, uh, oh, yeah. the next meeting. Um, and uh, Henry? I'd comment just about it. Why not say traffic to the right has preference? So you come up, you look to the right, there's a car, it's got preference over you. Other than that, you can move. That's a great suggestion. Simple, simple yeah. solution. If, if you folks could ponder that issue and we'll, we'll take it up at the next meeting when uh, approval will be considered. Yep. We uh, now need a motion to uh, table to the public hearing. I Victoria. actually have some questions. I'm sorry? I actually have some questions for the applicant. On completeness or? No, we're done with completeness. I know. So, um, what else would you talk about before the next? Um, some things that I want them to point out um, at this time, and if, like Henry or Carol Ann's questions, they may need to go back to the drawing board, I'd want them to come prepared rather than that okay. evening well, ask you, them to do things. Can you specify them briefly to the? Yeah, yep. I'll try to be very brief. Um, I was looking over your plot, and I do use this frequently, and so I just, a couple of really quick questions, and you can just point them out, we'll move along. How do you access the sand stockpile? I don't see a place to park. Bob, you can confirm if I'm incorrect, but you access the sand stockpile from down below, correct? Sure. You can actually access it both ways. Our preference would be down below. Thank you. Um, that way people can back into it. But occasionally people will stop in front of the pile. We actually, there's a traffic cone there. We try to discourage that because yeah. it narrows up the entrance. And if they want to take a quick shovel or two, uh, but we really would encourage them to go down behind the pile. Okay, and that would be the same with the gravel then. Once again, you want them to go down below to access that gravel pile? Uh, there really isn't a gravel pile down below. It's all the base of the winter sand pile. Um, okay, I do see something that says gravel. Probably gravel storage area or staging area. Uh, let's see, the sign will say residents only limit one five-gallon bucket. That's the winter sand. 
Okay. Oh, the, so gravel is winter sand? No, it's, it should be screen it, sand or winter sand. Yeah. Once again, down below. Yep. Okay. Um, there is a sign that says um, new lane sign, see details. Is that what the sign actually says, new lane? Because some of your other signs will say, do not enter sign. I'm assuming it says, do not enter. So what does that sign actually say, new lane? So because this sign has a lot more words on it, I didn't want to write them all on that one sheet. Okay. So if you go to your detail page, you'll see a sign, and it actually will say, lane one, recycling and MSW, or lane two. So there is a, um, an example of what that sign looks like. Because it's going to be a custom sign, we provided you a detail of what it looked like versus your typical stop or do not enter or write only sign. I thought that was actually going to be um, on the ground. Some, some signs are like these arrows on the ground or this stop that's on the ground. Thank you very much for answering that one. Yes. That's the sign. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you still have used oil container over here? We do. Uh, next to, adjacent to the compactor building, uh, there's a used oil uh, igloo, it's a yellow. Yeah, I, That's going to stay in its current location. I just didn't see anything noting that um, that's where it still is. Okay. So I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Um, all right, um, I had a question. There's, there's some bins way in the back. One, two, three bins. Mm -hmm. it, it, maybe a fourth over here. Is that for the public? Yes. So those what? are for access by the general public or contractors. There's bins for sheetrock, shingles, bulky waste, metal goods. And we're also showing uh, a top loading silver bullet in the event that if there are capacity issues or people prefer to use those, they can utilize those on site. But those are accessible. Right now, those are the containers that have the Jersey barriers in front of them and we're proposing to put a railing to make them a little more accessible for folks that use them. Okay, so the bins way at the top? There's probably some extra bins that are shown. Those are not accessible. Okay. So we might have an extra bin. As one gets full, we'll put another one in its place. Okay, because those There's one for aluminum, labeled. for glass also. Okay, because, um, yes, I'm very familiar with the ones, and they're all labeled, but then I saw some bins way at the top, and I was just wondering, are those for the public, but now I'm hearing they're not, they're just Correct. extra. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, there is an area in front of the swap shop that is, um, it has the striped area. Pavement and that's where you don't want people to park? We don't want people to park there. We well, know that there's going to be some temptation to probably park there. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you go up, you'll see we have a, a taller traffic cone. And our okay. Our hope is to use some type of, I'll call it a removable bollard or something that we can move away during a storm uh, or during the winter season, but we really want to discourage parking there. But it's probably going to be an area that people will leave bulky items okay. outside. I wasn't sure if that, a no parking. The intent is to not park there. And I, I'm also a little concerned because I know people will park wherever they can park, mm -hmm. especially on Saturday. Um, there is an area where you come out here and I'm just wondering if someone's going to park. I know it's hard to see, but is there room actually for somebody to park um, right in front of where it says raise concrete island see details? Mm -hmm. There's actually two no parking signs there right now and sometimes we extend the traffic cones down beyond that okay. to discourage someone pulling off there, but I, I understand what you mean. Okay. And Last question. Was there actually uh, um, in the details that picture of the railing? I'm not sure if I saw that. Was it there? Before? Yes, it would. Um, that's on your structural pages. So the ones that are labeled S, I think there might be an S101 or 102. I can also see if I can find it real quickly. Okay, it is on S200, um, and unfortunately this is a, a side profile, bottom detail right here. 
What this is just showing is it will be a skinny post. They're an inch and a half in diameter. And then there will be two rails, one that is three foot six up in the air and one that's in the midpoint, one foot nine inches that runs um, parallel with it. And the post will be spaced. Typically, there's feet on center. Thank you. I just didn't yep. pick up on that. And when you go to pay the attendant now, so the attendants will now be in this um, between lanes. I don't know if they're numbered. The attendant has a little office now away from where the attendant normally sat. Is that correct? So if you need to pay for items that you're dropping off, um, do you walk in front of the traffic, or how would you? No, pay? we want them to park in front of the compactor building in those spaces. Mm -hmm. So that would be our preference. That's where our uh, all of our cable and our internet connections are in the main office. So we want to discourage having someone. Uh, at one of the satellite compactors or stationary compactors paying and walking across and, and tying up traffic there. So our preference is to come into the main office and park in front of the compactor building. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. For any other questions or discussion before we have a motion to table to the public hearing? There being none, I'd like to have a motion to table. Elaine? Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of upgrades to the recycling center located on Denison Drive be tabled to the October 18, 2016 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. We have second. motion. Is there a second? Joe, thank you. Any discussion on the second in motion? All for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you, everyone. I'll say again, the, uh, the site walk will be Thursday, uh, September 22nd at 4.30 p.m. at the Recycling Center. The uh, next and final item of business, <coughs> excuse me, Concerns the Cape Chiropractic and Acupuncture Site Plan Amendments. The, um, to briefly review the, uh, the applicants, the owners of the property are requesting a reapproval of a three lot minor subdivision located at 12 Hill Way, which the planning board did approve on May 17, 2016. The approval expired when the plan was not signed and recorded within 90 days, and this has been described to us as an administrative error. Um, the applicants are also asking for approval of minor changes uh, for the site plan approval, which is also granted in May 17, 2016. <coughs> uh, the application will be reviewed in compliance with Section 1623, Minor Subdivision Review, Section 19-9, Site Plan Review, in section 1964, Town Center Design Standards. The procedure will be as follows. The board will um, <coughs> begin with hearing a summary by the applicant of the changes to be made to the plans since the May 17 approval. The uh, will then provide opportunity for public comment. The board will then make a finding of completeness for the subdivision application. And then we'll also uh, determine by consensus if adequate information has been provided to consider the site plan amendments, the relatively minor ones just described. If the uh, applications are considered complete, there can be substantive uh, discussion. There is no specific reapproval of subdivision provision in the ordinance, so the staff is recommending, and I agree, that the uh, reapproval will be tre treated as a new subdivision approval or consideration de novo, which requires a public hearing. A public hearing hasn't been scheduled or advertised for this evening, so the application, if found to be complete, will be tabled to the October meeting when a public hearing can be held. I should add that the consideration of the uh, subdivision approval afresh can take into account all of the findings and determinations and uh, substantive application that we heard back in May. 
So it, it won't be a soup to nuts consideration of each individual item. Um, and then after that, the board has the option to table, approve, or approve with conditions the site plan amendments and the option to table the subdivision um, to a public hearing. Um, just let me say in advance, this sounds a little bit complicated, and it is. Um, the, the amount of substantive difference between then and now is, is quite slight. The subdivision uh, plan is essentially the same. The site plan has uh, a number of minor changes which will be described. Because the uh, subdivision plan does need to have a public hearing, which has not been noted, so it will occur at the October meeting, uh, I am going to recommend to the board that we table final decision on the site plan am amendment to that same meeting so that these two items will be uh, decided in tandem, uh, excuse me, together rather than one followed by the other. Uh, let's uh, first hear from the applicant. Uh, if you could describe what's going on here, <laughs> your own words. Uh, the, uh, if, if you could address the, the lack of change in the subdivision and also anything new that uh, comes up on the site plan. Jonathan. Can I just ask a question? Why, why didn't this receive a notice that it was going to be on a public hearing? Why uh, didn't it? Yes. Because um, procedurally we knew that this was scheduled at the workshop. Procedurally we knew, but I never, I should have checked to make sure whether a public hearing is required for a major sub, for a minor subdivision. And I did not check that at the, at the workshop. I should have advised you at the workshop that it had to happen. You could have then voted at the workshop to schedule a public hearing for tonight. But absent that advice, you didn't vote to schedule it. And we don't seem to have a lot of good options. So. I think it's fair to say that we would have voted to have a public hearing had we known. I scratched but. my head and thought about it, and I couldn't come up with any other solution. Okay. Yeah, we, we might have recommended it because the way the ordinance reads, a, a plan which is not filed becomes null and void. And so restarting the process, even if it is not going in great depth into the substance, seems appropriate. So considering the completeness tonight for the subdivision and uh, next at the next meeting along with the uh, site plan, makes a certain amount of sense and I understand that the applicants can live with this uh, timing issue. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and uh, let us know what you have here to tell us. Okay, great, thank you. So I'm Jocelyn Booth, I'm an architect at WBRC, architects and engineers, representing the owners on this project. Um, again, I apologize for the subdivision lapsing, um, which is why we're here to begin with. So that is a clerical error on our part. Um, can you speak more directly into the microphone, please? <laughs> yes, is that better? That's yeah. much better, thank you. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Um, so, it is much louder. Um, so, unfortunately, the subdivision did lapse um, before we could apply for reapproval, um, or for an extension, rather, so I apologize for that. Um, nothing has changed on that, so we are looking for a reapproval of the subdivision that was approved on May 17th, um, with no changes to that. Um, you can see on the site, the project site, as we've discussed a few times, and the subdivision into three separate pieces. Um, at the same time, we are looking um, for a few minor site plan amendments to be reviewed. We have uh, six items that we'd like to look at, you guys, look at with you guys. Um, I'm going to go very briefly on this map so you can see where they are, and then I have blow-ups of each of them showing kind of the individual pieces. So. One is right here. We are looking to move a proposed tree from here over to here. And the goal of this is gonna be to create an area for snow removal on the site and snow storage. Item two, in the conditions of approval, um, a generator had been approved, but we had to show a location and sound ordinance being met. So we've proposed a location over here and I'll show you a close up of this. Um, Item three, the connector between the two buildings. As the project developed, um, the shape of this has tweaked slightly. The height is the same, the area is the same, but it's rotated slightly in order to better fit the structure, the roof lines, and the sight lines. Item three, item four, 
is right over here. There's two units right here, one on the end and one next to it. They had two separate entries, one off the side and one off the front. We're looking to put those together with one canopy over them instead of two. Item five, there's a porch right here. Um, it was already covered. This is also where the electrical meters are gonna go. So we're looking to add a solid wall portion right there to hide the electric meters from street view. And item six is the streets, the uh, signs for the building. Originally those had been proposed as lit signs. We're proposing now that they will not be lit signs. So looking at these a little closer, the shifting of the tree, which is change number one. This is the approved design with two site trees right here. We're looking to move that tree over to this location. Um, the plantings would move down as well and wildflowers would be planted here by the owner. Seasonal that way during snow, the snow could be piled on that without ruining any of the plants. Two, the generator. You can see we've located the generator right here. Um, we've put a couple small plants around it. And as far as the noise requirements, um, the proposed generator produces 64.9 decibels at 23 feet. So there's a couple of websites you can go to and a couple of calculations you can do to figure out what that sound is gonna be at different distances. So based on the proposed generator and the distances to the property lines, we've calculated the sound at each of the different property lines around the generator, and it is well below the town standards for that. Can I ask one question on that? Yes. Um, with regards to the 100, 116 feet to property line at mm -hmm. the bottom, yep. is the building sort of in the way of, of that? The arrow is kind of going through the building? It is not going through the building, no. It's not. The building is... Nope. The building line is right here. Okay. Thanks. Yep. So this is showing um, in plan changes three, four, and five, and then I'll show you perspectives and elevations of each of these as well. So three is the connector between the buildings. It was originally more of a kind of a squat square shape with a wider stair. It's been narrowed and turned at a slight angle. Um, this is at the bottom on the ground level in order to get a structural post down as well as to get kind of the sight line entry of the door from the area up here, as well as to help some roof lines and to help the stair configuration. Item four, you can see here, we had two doors. We've now condensed those to one door or one porch. And five, this is where we had an existing porch. We've made this a solid wall so that we can put the electric meters behind it, screened from public view. So looking at elevations, you can see the approved design of the connector. I apologize, it looks a little washed out. And then you can see in the square here, the new design of the connector. So the roof is at the same height. It's the same square footage. It does add um, some more glazing. And I know one of the original concerns had been making this feel like an entry from this side. So I think it's kind of helping achieve that. Um, changes, you can see three and five here, slightly. Very, very minor changes, um, just a solid wall. From this view, the connector actually looks the same. It's really the other side where there's a difference. And then change four, moving the two doors next to each other rather than the one door. And the elevations on the other side, looking at the same changes. The connector was a little bit more hidden here before it was rotated at an angle. In the proposed design, you can see the new glazing that's been added to it. On this elevation, you can see in the approved design where the door was on this side, that's now been turned into a window instead of a door, and the door moved around to the other side. And then finally, the porch here, it has the same opening over it. It now just has a solid wall on the side to hide those electric meters. Perspectives, this was the approved design for the connector, and this is the proposed design for the connector, and this is kind of a close-up of that. Looking at that entry that shifts sides, this was the approved design. This is the proposed design. And then the final change is the site lighting. 
just looking at the lighting down here and the sign up here, and that those will not be lit. So as I mentioned, they're, they're rather minor changes, but it was enough that it warranted coming back to the board. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, any questions before we open for public comment? John? Just uh, the, the connector, is that going to be lit uh, at all times? Like, or at night, will it, the light go down? Or? That's going to be an operational issue. Um, it's mainly for the commercial space downstairs, so I would imagine that would be lit during operational hours. Okay. Um, in winter hours, you know, it may be lit at night when they're open. Um, all right. It's really, it's not going to be on a timer. So it's on the, it's sort of a business thing? It's a business thing. No uh, <clears throat> questions. Uh, may, uh, for the opportunity for comment by the public is now open. Any members of the public wish to be heard? When there being none, we'll close the public comment. <clears throat> um, any other um, questions before we uh, consider the uh, issue of completeness for the subdivision application, Elaine? I wanted to bring up again something we talked about at the workshop um, and I see that unless I'm missing something here basically this plus the plan is the application this time and we're incorporating material that was submitted um, sometime before the original May 17 2016 approval so we're incorporating material that could have been presented March, April, maybe even before that. I think that we need an affirmative written statement from the applicant or actually from the engineers saying that all of this material that we're incorporating by reference, that no, that no material changes have been made to anything referred to in the material we're incorporating. So if you could just include with the actual application a formal letter to that extent referencing the prior material and saying that there's been no material change to any representations that were made in that prior material. Sure. We can absolutely do that. And that's my understanding. Is that correct? Yes, okay. that is correct. So I th from my point of view, we're okay on completeness, but I wouldn't feel comfortable making actual findings without that written representation. Okay. Yeah, and I believe we referenced that in the letter that we sent, but we can state that more explicitly for you. That'd be great. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, any other comments or questions? Um, and on completeness, I'd just like to spend a minute um, going back through what we have considered, <coughs> excuse me, uh, from our previous deliberations and, and the substance of the application. The, um, there are no issues involving floodplains, discharging waste in soils and streams and so forth. Uh, potable water is available. There has been an erosion and sedimentation plan submitted. A traffic study has been submitted. There are no new roads. This is basically internal um, passage of, of vehicles and pedestrians to serve the commercial and the residential space. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the uh, new sidewalk is proposed on the east side of uh, Hillway connecting frontage of lots one, two, and three. The applicant has requested a waiver from constructing a sidewalk on, on Scott Dyer Road in front of lot three. We did have a letter of commentary on that point uh, from a person living in the neighborhood. <coughs> um, the sewage disposal will be handled by the town facilities. Solid waste will be picked up by a, a disposal company. Uh, the, the site is not in a scenic vista or, town, or a scenic corridor. There's been no wildlife habitats identified. The question was raised regarding long-eared bats, which Maureen is prepared to respond to uh, briefly. Briefly, that's what I was going to ask. Um, let, let me just put it this way. Uh, our town engineer, Steve Harding, has actually done a lot of work with bats over the last two years in other applications, and so he's kind of our expert. And he called me, he shared much, much information with me. But the brief answer is 
that this does not trigger any federal review. It does not trigger any state review. It's not anywhere near bats are protected right now. And I have much more information I can share with you if you would like it. Board members wish to hear more on the subject. I actually have a little critical habit determination, not prudent, from the fish and wild wildlife. Um, okay. The conformity with ordinances, uh, considerations given to the comprehensive plan. This, the town center is one of the town's growth area. <coughs> the compliance with zoning has been uh, ascertained. Uh, it has multiplex housing, which is a use uh, that's in the town center design standards. Um, the stormwater issue is, is the, the uh, paved portion is all with porous pavement and there's a rain garden so there's been quite extensive consideration given to stormwater planning and uh, uh, mitigation. Um, that is kind of a uh, thumbnail sketch of the oh and, and the, the buffering of, of course in the, which is in the subdivision as well as the site plan criteria has been extensively considered. There's been a lot of uh, planting of trees, shrubs, ornamental gardens and the like, uh, including some redesign of the uh, ornamental gardens um, to satisfy statements made by members of the board. So um, that being the case, I think uh, if there's no other discussion, I'd ask for a motion on completeness. Henry, thank you. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted, including all the plans and materials approved as part of the May 7, 2016 Planning Board approval and the facts presented, the application of two Penguin Properties LLC for minor subdivision review of the three lot subdivision and site plan review of two buildings containing 6,205 square feet of medical office space, 10 multifamily residential units and the 357 square foot building connector located at 12 Hill Way be deemed complete. We have a motion and seconded. Is there any discussion on the second motion? There being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Um, before we motion to table to a public hearing, I'd also like to get the board's view on as a matter of consensus as to whether the uh, information has been satisfactorily completed on the site plan amendments, the uh, five, I believe, items which you reviewed for us. Any board members need additional information? No. No. Okay, well that will be uh, then considered uh, at the next meeting along with the public hearing and approval of the, reapproval of the uh, subdivision plan, Elaine. We did get public comments on two points, um, one being the sidewalk um, on Scott Dyer Road and the other concerning the impact of blasting on a similar issue, students walking to school. And since we did get public comment, I don't know if that we need to talk about them tonight, but I certainly think we should be prepared at least to explain to the public what Maureen has told us. I'm not sure I totally followed. Um, so on the on the sidewalk, that is not a waiver of submission requirement. That's a waiver of a construction standard, so that's part of subdivision review, and you would have to reconsider that at your meeting next month when you, when you consider a vote on the project. Um, what you said in the past was that the applicant was constructing a set, uh, sidewalk along the, uh, I want to say, east side, of Scott Dyer Road, of Hillway, and that the lot that would be created that is on the corner of Hillway and Scott Dyer Road, if at some point, it is not proposed to be developed at this time, but if at any point it would be proposed for development, trigger planning board review, and that would then be required to install a sidewalk on Scott Dyer Road. There is a sidewalk already on the other side of Scott Dyer Road. And there should, the other point that should be made is even if you did uh, decide to put a sidewalk on that portion of the property, there would still be a small gap because there is a third property, a small one located between the applicant's property and the former Cumberland Farms. So even if you did 
require sidewalk there, it would not yet be contiguous. On the question of blasting, uh, I can tell you that uh, this project has still a valid site plan approval. Under that valid site plan approval, the applicant has met with uh, town staff for their pre-construction meeting. And it was a, a very detailed meeting. Uh, blasting was discussed at length. Uh, there, the blasting contractor that the developer will be using already has a uh, has a has experience with the town. He already has his license and his insurance filed with the police department. Um, town staff have already looked at making sure there will be a lot of communication between the school department. And in fact, the police chief is the designated person to coordinate that communication. So I feel that that really is totally and completely covered, one, and two, that it really is more a construction issue than a planning board site plan review issue. Okay, one, one follow-up question. I believe there was also discussion about town plans for improvements to Hill Way. Yes. And now that we're three months farther along, maybe an update as to how this might coordinate with the town plans or if that has moved forward. The plans are, there's no plans yet. Um, at, uh, probably next month, uh, if Bob Malley comes back for the recycling center, you might throw that question in at him because he's the lead staff person on that. But I know that he and the uh, town engineer are already planning on those plans happening sometime in the spring. I've earnestly requested to be included in that discussion. So definitely it is, it's still on the to-do list and the to-do list for soon. Thank you. Uh, Maureen, on the blasting, is it yes. just my own lack of knowledge? Is it fairly clear that the, the detonations would not occur while the, the children's foot traffic going to or leaving school was in, well, in place? What I would say is that, you know, there, the library was built and finished construction in February this year. That included blasting, and that is on the school campus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the town coordinated that to happen so that there were not going to be problems. This is a project that is across the street. Uh, they know they have to coordinate. We've already communicated with them. They need to coordinate. And I, I fully expect that to happen. The conversation at the pre-construction meeting was actually talking about trying to do some of those things on a day when school was not even in session. So I, I feel like staff and the applicant are all over that issue. And the police chief is the person yes. in charge on this? He's, it's issue. the the fire chief <clears throat> is actually the supervisor of all blasting, but for this project, the person who will be in charge of coordination between the schools and the notification of when blasting is happening will be the police chief. Jonathan. Well, I just have a couple things to say on that. I, I think it's nice that we're addressing that since it was a public concern, but I think that's out of the planning boards sort of body of work that we do when it comes to this sort of thing with actual construction and how it's done. Um, and the other uh, the other thing that was addressed by the public uh, was the long-eared bat, which I think that we've already touched on. And then the third was the, the sidewalk. And I just wanted to point out the, the sidewalk issue with Scott Dyer Road, um, that was addressed uh, previously. Right. We talked about whether or not there needed to be or we were going to look for a sidewalk. And I think uh, Maureen pointed out that per the town center zoning, as long as there's one sidewalk already on Scott Dyer, there wasn't, it wasn't going to be necessary to put another sidewalk in, if I'm correct on that. And since there already is one on the south side, then it wouldn't be necessary to put one on that, what's going to be a vacant lot, essentially. And like Maureen said, the, the red stable lot is still there, and it, wouldn't, it would be basically a sidewalk that would have to stop at that lot unless you got approval from the owner of that lot to keep it going. Through the, to the old Cumberland Farms entrance way. And, and there are some other options for that. It, I mean, the question for the board is, last in May, you found that there was sufficient support to grant that waiver. Right. And the question would be, do you still feel that way? And has anything materially changed that would change your opinion? And because this is a de novo consideration, and, and uh, the comment that was made was actually quite thoughtful, I thought, and, and analytical. And I think her main point was it seemed to complete the continuity of the sidewalk scheme to put it in. <clears throat> but um, the other side of that coin, I think, is that the 
pedestrian pattern is really not intended to go on that side of Scott Dyer Road. It, it will cross up where the crosswalk is going from Hillway over to the school. So there didn't seem to be any compelling reason to put that in uh, right there. I guess having worked on the town center plan multiple times, I, you know, I'm very pro sidewalks in the town center and, and the, the committee has always said we want sidewalks everywhere and, and I do think that section of Scott Dyer Road should have a sidewalk on it. But the question is how much sidewalk should this applicant build and what is the timing of that? And, and since we still have plenty of authority under the zoning ordinance to require that section of sidewalk to be built when that lot is developed. Perhaps this is a reasonable phasing of improvements. Caroline? I see no reason to reconsider that waiver that we gave back in May. Uh, it's, it was a logical conclusion based on the fact that the lot that it would be following is vacant and why should, and until we know what's going on that, what do you know, how would the sidewalk maybe be reconfigured depending on what goes on that lot? So it doesn't make sense to create the sidewalk before the building, before there's a building. So I support retaining the waiver on the sidewalk on Scott Dyer Road. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I think everybody does, but I'm glad we actually considered it and responded as you indicate. Okay, um, we do need a motion to table the, um, <coughs> excuse me, subdivision approval to the October meeting. Uh, Jonathan? Uh, motion to table to public hearing be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted, including all the plans and materials approved as part of the May 17, 2016 planning board approval, and the facts presented. The application of the two Penguin proper Properties, LLC, for minor subdivision review of a three-lot subdivision and site plan review of two buildings cont containing 6,205 square feet of medical office space, 10 multifamily residential units, and 357 square feet. Building connector located at 12 Hill Way be tabled to the regular October 18, 2016 meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. We have a second. Henry, thank you. Uh, we have a seconded motion. Is there any further discussion? Could I? Yes. I'm reading this over, and just for clarity, I'm hoping that the man who made the motion and the person who seconded would be willing to add one word where it says, and site plan review, I would add amendments. Oh. Site plan review amendments. Amendments of two buildings. I'd be willing to make that friendly amendment yeah. to the motion. Thank you. Okay, so the motion does cover both the subdivision reapproval or a fresh approval, if you will, as well as the um, hearing for the site plan amendments. And we, that as amended, we have a, Henry, is your second still good? Uh, any further discussion on the second of the motion? Call for a vote, all in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Um, Thank you. I think we're good to go. Great. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Finally, there is a, a opportunity for public comment on anything that has not been on the agenda. If the public would like to be heard, there being none, we will motion to adjourn. Make a motion. We adjourn. I second that motion. Unanimously passed. Thank you.